uh, hope you are doing well and uh, today uh, we are going to learn a very very important topic that is iso and after this we will be learning about iec also okay so before i start with the iso let me <coughs> tell you many people when they ask what is iso they just start the uh, abbreviation you know iso standards for indian uh, international standard for organization but that is not the true so iso is what the international organization for standardization which is a very important standard okay so once uh, once you learn about this standard you will definitely be benefited uh, in the you know long run because standards what is standard why there are standard you know these are very very important things to understand first and why there is a necessity to have a standard you know so uh, standards are uh, generally uh, designed or the developed by you know different stakeholders it's not the one body or the one council who develops the standard okay and so standard is a document that provides requirements specifications guidelines or characteristics that can be used consistently to ensure that materials products processes and services are fit for their purpose so fit for their purpose intent for use is extremely important uh, to understand the meaning exact meaning of fit for purpose okay so what should be the fit for purpose any uh, you know any specification which you are designing for your product say for example tablet capsule any pharmaceutical product any process the manufacturing process or any any kind of process you know the it process Uh, or hr process any kind of process okay or what which provide the guideline or characteristic that can be used consistently to ensure that materials products processes and services okay so products we have discussed processes we have discussed services like suppose we are having raj global pharma regulatory affair consultant we are providing consulting services so i can also go for the standards okay iso 9001 so there are different kinds of standards which can be used to you know define your specification uh, define your process you know to to define your quality management system which would help other people who are taking you know services from you or who are testing any products uh, in your laboratory say for example or uh, somebody is buying your product okay so with respect to all these uh, you know these standards are useful and that's why i hope it is pretty clear now what is standard why there is a necessity of standard okay so uh, once you uh, design your product process as per any standard you know the specific standard it should provide the consistent result correct so consistency is equally important to ensure that your material or the process or services fit for their purpose so iso uh, is international organization for standardization which is independent body non governmental organization global network of national standards bodies with one member per country okay coordinated by a central secretariat in geneva switzerland provides a platform for developing practical tools through common understanding and cooperation with all stakeholders as i mentioned it provides a platform for developing practical tool am i right through the common understanding and cooperation with all stakeholders so who are the stakeholders as i said regulators or uh, then the uh, companies you know uh, and uh, there are many others like stakeholders it's not only uh, the regulators and the industry or uh, anyone else there are many people the scientists the committee you know other stakeholders uh, to define the standards okay so you would be surprised to uh, see that there are more than 24184 standards you know more than 24000 you can see so those international standards covering almost all aspects of technology and manufacturing 
okay and there are 168 members representing iso in their country there is only one member per country okay like who has 193 nation if you google how many countries participate in who guidelines india is one of them okay so like that iso is a international standard right so there are 168 members representing iso in their country correct and 802 technical committee and sub committee to take care of standards development so this number goes on increase uh, uh, increasing because uh, the standards are developed you know if you see the history uh, it started from 1906 okay and uh, then uh, the the first standard was uh, published in when 1947 so this is the uh, history about the how, how this iso standard started with so 1906 there was a committee called international electro technical commission okay and then you can see that there is a 20 years gap after 1906 in 1926 there was a international federation of the national standardizing association that is isa then in 1946 at london delegates from 25 countries decided to create a new international organization the object of which would be to facilitate the international coordination and unification of industrial standard so as ich also you know there was a aim to harmonize you know the technical requirement across the us europe and japan so like that uh, iso also you know their objective is what to facilitate the international coordination and unification of the industrial standards okay and like that 25 countries uh, 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 were came together and uh, formed this uh, standard and in 1947 iso began to officially function so 1947 during our independence day you know it was started functioning then 1951 the first iso standard was published okay so that is how uh, the international standard is and how it helps it helps to make your product compatible so they fit and work well with each other then identify safety issues of products and services and share good ideas and solution technological know how and best management practices okay so you must have uh, heard about uh, you know my company's iso 9001 of uh, uh, 2016 you know certified like uh, uh, in our institute also we have taken 29993 uh, you know 2017 so these are the uh, standard certification which is offered by uh, the uh, council okay the body and uh, how the iso governance structure uh, looks like you have to understand in brief uh, we have given the so the council is a uh, a uh, big body you know to which uh, there are uh, tmb technical committee and uh, central secretariat uh, reports so under council there is a general assembly okay so if you see uh, on the left hand side <coughs> so the president's committee council standing committee like csc uh, advisory group policy development committees all those you know reports to the council so council is a big uh, governance body uh, which helps to you know design and develop the uh, iso standards okay and there are some policy makers and uh, the council standing committee uh, so uh, what are what is iso council let us understand first so iso council is a core governance body of the organization and reports to the general assembly they meet three times a year okay made up of 20 member bodies the iso officers and the chairs of the policy development committee so here you can see the full form is given uh, for the casco copelco and the devco casco means what casco means council committee on conformity assessment consumer policy committee and then the development committee okay so membership to the council is open to all member bodies and rotates to make sure it is representative of members community so i iso council has direct responsibility over a number of bodies reporting to council okay so the president committee advises council on member matters decided by council and uh, csc council standing committee and addresses matters related to finance 
okay csc finance strategy and policy cscsp and the this nomination for the governance position that is csc nom nomination okay so has over oversight over the organization governance practices then the policy advisory group casco copelco and devco okay so this is how the council uh, you know has the direct responsibility over this function so who are benefited out of this international standards industry regulators and our society am i right so industry as uh, as we have seen of course all industrial standards are uh, uh, available with iso okay so industry uh, you see become more competitive by offering products and services that are accepted globally and uh, uh, enter new markets easily correct because of iso standard when we claim that we are iso so and so certified we are iso 14000 we are iso 22000 so they uh, easily can enter into different markets across the globe correct then they raise profits by offering products with increased quality compatibility and safety then reduce cost by non reinventing the wheel and using available resources better benefit from the knowledge and best practices of leading expert around the world okay and how the regulators are uh, benefited out of this iso standards they help in harmonizing regulation across countries to boost global trade then increase credibility and trust throughout the supply chain and make it easier for countries to outsource and specialize how the society is uh, benefited out of iso standards so wider choice of safe and reliable products and services at competitive price correct and best practices and co concerted action at the organizational level to practically address global challenges like climate change and sustainability nowadays see sustainability the standard is available for sustainability also standard is available for safety quality efficacy and different testing and we will uh, discuss what all types of standards are available and how uh, the industry or the regulators or the society are taking benefit out of it okay so why this iso is unique you know why because of global network brand integrity commitment and partnership how okay global network means iso members come from virtually every country in the world like we mentioned that 168 countries right so iso members come from virtually every country in the world and iso is a brand you know recognized uh, uh, globally and that is why it is unique correct why it is unique because of global network because of brand okay and it is associated with confidence so anyone who claims uh, we are iso certified then the confidence is boosted correct right? then the integrity publishing the standards of uh, the world needs since 1947 so since our independence there was a need for this uh, you know standard so the integrity correct right? then commitment work with more than 700 organization and over 100000 experts from different industries and sectors so you can see 100000 experts are working so that is that shows the commitment how much they are committed correct and that's why this standard is iso is unique okay then the partnership they work closely with the international electrotechnical commission that is iec and the international telecommunication union that is itu have a strategic partnership with the world trade organization that is wto to promote free and fair trade <coughs> so how does iso work iso only develops a standard if there is a market need for it correct when there is a need there is a supply correct when there is a demand there is a supply and that's how it works even in business also when there is a demand there is a supply correct and the industry and stakeholders society they uh, you know uh, 
uh, they always uh, see that uh, how I can develop, how I can go move forward. So there should be some standard, you know, with the help of which we can uh, move forward. Anyway, <coughs> any new product which you want to launch in the market. If you don't know what are the design and development concept, how I am going to test that product, you know, what are the different tests, specification. So the standards are available. Okay. And if not, if it is newly, newly uh, developed product, then also you can approach and uh, the industry or, you know, send the requirement to the ISO body council. And they will look into the matter and then slowly, slowly they will take the, uh, you know, advices from different countries, different regulators, industry, and they form a standard and it will be published newly. Okay. So always see to that newly added guidances or the standards are uh, published and they are kept, uh, you know, above all the standards. So international standards are created by the people who will use and be impacted by them, right? So they are called exports and they come from the industry, government, consumer organization, academia, non-governmental organization and more. See, everyone is involved, right? Even from academia, non-governmental, correct? Consumer. So it is the member's role to identify the export and ensure an active voice for their country. Correct? So each country has their own committee. Am I right? So suppose India wants, uh, India is looking for uh, some standards which is not available and they are designing some new products. So they can go to the Indian committee, you know, and then those uh, uh, responsible people will go to the council and then it will be discussed among all the stakeholders, okay, throughout all industry regulators and academia and other non-governmental uh, organization and so on. And then it will be agreed mutually through all out all the countries members okay and then it will be published so expert advice the expert committee the voice you know that is uh, for their country is equally important so who does all this all the expert or the members of that respective country so the iso uh, central secretariat that is iso cs coordinates the development process and publishes the standard okay so you can read in your mind how uh, these iso standards are published right so there are iso members from uh, different countries then there is iso cs right full time st uh, staff correct which facilitates participation in standardization and strengthens the relationship with the partner and these are the expert more than 100000 in the world who writes the standard Okay, so you can just read all the tabs, you know, given here. Okay, ISO members who help manage technical committee where the standards are written. Okay, so member can propose any new standards. Enable national expert and stakeholders to participate and have a say in standard development. Okay. And even when the standards are published, he has right to vote for approval of standard, right? And he can represent ISO in their own country. <clears throat> so that is the role of ISO stand uh, member. Sorry. Then what is the role of ISO CS? So full time, right? Who helps in uh, strengthening relationship with the partner, who facilitates participation and who provides a neutral platform for the expert to get together and achieve consensus, correct? Coordinate the standard development process and make standard available. Increases awareness around the international standard and ISO, correct? And the expert from 100,000 countries is what? Write the standard. And these are nominated by the members, but can also come from the partner organizations like the United Nations and other key players, okay? So uh, there are some common categories of ISO. As I said, there are uh, uh, more than 24,000 standards, okay? 
so which falls under different categories so 9000 series uh, some people uh, talk as 9k k means 1000 so 9001 uh, certification ensures that you have proper quality management system qms okay implemented in an organization at all areas of the business so usually iso 9001 talks about the building quality management system okay which helps your organization to have a better visibility in the market okay so what does it contains exactly okay iso 9001 what does it contain exactly so in this you have to uh, have the top management commitment okay the continuous improvement and along with that different processes you have to build around different processes means right from the hr policy it policy your company objective you know uh, the pro purchase procedure if you have third party or any outsourcing processes so you have to define how you manage those outsourced processes you know then uh, uh, within your company how you control your product how you control your documents so good documentation practices how you maintain the record okay so all this comes under this quality management system then we talk about the validation how you validate your processes right though although it is manufacturing process or you know any any kind of process which is applicable uh, with respect to your organization or your product correct then how you uh, manage if the products are fail if the product failure the corrective action preventive action correct so all these uh, comes when we talk about the building a quality management system in your company so iso 9001 series helps in QMS, okay. So it is a generic system which is implemented across or different different organization. All it is IT or HR or whichever form. Even I can take. I have my institute, uh, training institute. I can go for ISO 9001. But more appropriate standard will be ISO, which one? 2993 2017. So there is one more standard ISO 21000 so while selection also you have to think uh, about it what these standards are exactly what are the different clauses mentioned under respective standards okay then we come to iso 14000 series okay iso 9000 then iso 14000 certification ensures that organization have implemented environmental management system that make business owners and managers more aware of their environmental responsibilities okay so uh, we are free from you know the uh, you can see uh, lots of companies or the even manufacturing companies uh, the chemical pesticide and uh, even you if you see tarapur barc and all those areas uh, there is a requirement of having chimney and you know the waste material how you uh decompose or how you handle the uh, waste management and all uh, so that you help to build a good environment so that's how uh, many factories pharmaceutical chemical and other industries who are generating lots of pollution okay they have to go for the iso 14001 standard then iso 50001 specifies the support organization in all sectors to use energy more efficiently through the development of an energy management system. So 50001 talks about the energy management system. <coughs> ISO 17025 specifies the general requirement for the competence to carry out tests and or calibration including sampling. So if you uh, go for any testing laboratories, they will claim that we are NABL accredited laboratory or we are ISO 17025. That means what? They have the competency to carry out different tests, calibration, sampling and so on. Okay. Then come to ISO 26000. <coughs> ISO 26000 provides guidance on how businesses and organization can operate in a socially responsible way. 
okay so you might have heard about csr and all correct social responsibility social corporate responsibility so 26000 provides guidance on how businesses and organization can operate in a socially responsible way then iso 22000 certification which is specifically for the food okay food safety so uh, when you uh, have your uh, factory uh, for the food production okay food nutra and all then you can go for iso 22000 uh, standard so you can uh, see under our fssi uh, also they have mentioned uh, this has become mandatory uh, standard uh, those who are into food factory hotel business you know so all these industry are uh, going forward with iso 22000 standard and come to iso 20000 is a global standard that specify the requirement for an information technology so itsm uh, talks about iso 20000 iso 31000 certification is related to risk management for improving operational effectiveness and efficiency <laughs> Then ISO 13485, uh, which I am handling uh, frequently for the medical devices, okay, in which we build a quality management system uh, wherein organization has to demonstrate, you know, they need to demonstrate its ability to provide medical devices and related services that consistently meet customer and applicable regulatory requirement, okay. So, uh, under ISO 13485 also there are eight different clauses okay here also we have to write the uh, quality objective uh, the quality manual which comprises of you know eight clauses so we have to define the legal requirement regulatory requirement uh, along with all the processes all the documentation practice you know record design and development clause how you design and develop how you maintain the history then uh, cleaning process if you have medical device <coughs> which needs the cleaning process or the sterilization process you know so how you manage all the uh, uh, how you avoid how you classified your areas to avoid the contamination then the microbial contamination environmental contamination okay additionally if you are going for the eto sterilization or gamma sterilization uh, which is outsourced then you have to go along with iso 11 uh, 11135 which specifies the requirement for development validation and routine control of an ethylene oxide that is eto sterilization process for the medical devices in both the industry and the healthcare facility setting and it acknowledges the similarities and differences between two applications okay so uh, what i mean to say here if you have a medical device which needs the uh, ETO sterilization or anything, then you have to apply triple one three five standard also along with this quality management standard. Okay, then <coughs> ISO twenty seven zero zero one specifies the requirement for establishing, implementing, maintaining, and continually improving an information security management system. <coughs> So nowadays, because of cyber crime and all, information security management system is extremely important. Uh, due to this, uh, you know, digital uh, world, uh, all the communication and everything is happening uh, through the uh, electronic system, right? Even in case of uh, our uh, drug application, we send through e uh, Even uh, all the uh, accounts are managed via even banking account in your company when you uh, handle daily communication it is also through uh, you know email uh, and lots of uh, people have the software uh, then the there are different uh, software used for uh, you know uh, arranging electronic document management system kappa and there are so on like tally for you know accounting sap for other uh, processes uh, the material management system so like that and that's the reason iso 27001 uh, became very important which shows that how you implement how you establish and maintain continuous uh, you know uh, 
continually improving your information security management system. How safe is your system? That is uh, very important and that you have to demonstrate uh, by implementing this ISO 27001. <clears throat> then ISO 1012 specifies generic requirements and provides guidance for the management of measurement process and metrological confirmation uh, of measuring equipment used to support and demonstrate compliance with the metrological requirements. Okay. And there are many other standards also, but uh, mentioned standards are the common uh, which anyone can have. Okay. Then these are the five steps of ISO registration. Uh, step one, you have to uh, choose the right standard. Okay. This is the first step uh, to identify ISO standard that meets your goal, company goal and the objective of your organization. Step two, choosing the ISO registrar. The registrar is selected based on his or her experience with respect to the related industry of the business. Okay. So in case of uh, medical devices, we have to select the notified body. Okay. So different notified body uh, are there. So it is your choice uh, where you want to register your product, where you want to move forward you know so there are uh, many notified bodies which is certified by the uh, government okay so that is why uh, it's not that iso organization is giving uh, iso certification no that is a wrong assumption so you have to che choose a right standard and though go for the registrar so in case of um, 13485, the medical, I am talking about medical device standard, you have to go to notified body, then preparing the ISO application and quality management document. So you prepare accordingly all the uh, documentation, the process, the system, okay, SOP, work instruction, <coughs> all the records, everything, then you uh, fill up the application and submit to the selective uh, notified body and uh, then step four is the consideration in planning the steps is all about being prepared for the delays each document review and pre-assessment requires approximately two to four weeks hence regular surveillance of the system is required by the registrar so once you uh, fill up the application send it to the notified body uh, they will come and evaluate you, all your document process uh, during their stage one audit and uh, uh, once they give the non-conformity which is minor major they will give another six weeks uh, to come up with the you know solution uh, if it is uh, non-conformity is given so you can close all the NCs and uh, call for the second stage audit. So after second stage audit, they will see how you have implemented, how you have closed all the, how you have taken the corrective actions and uh, close all the NCs, that is non-conformities. Then only uh, you will get the certification. Okay, after stage two audit. And once you get the certification, okay. So that is how the robust return, okay. The registration and the audit process brings in the more value to the company, thereby improving standard. So these are the five steps, how you get the ISO uh, registration, ISO certification. So choosing ISO certification authority, so as I mentioned earlier, ISO doesn't give the certification. So there are a number of external authorities, like in case of, <clears throat> in case of ISO 13485, I said, no, there are so many notified bodies like BSI, SGS, TUV Intertake, you know, DNS, so many. So you have to select uh, as per your choice and uh, that judge the standard and assign the certificate if the company is compliant. Choose the right assigning authority and consider following points. You have to search the different ISO standard authorities first. See if they follow CASCO standards. However, the letter is the ISO box along with the ISO. Indeed, you must check if the certifying authority is accredited or not. As I mentioned, there so there are so many uh, notified body, you know, who certi give the certification. You have to check whether that body is certified or not. <coughs> uh, 
then choosing iso certification authorities uh, they will ask you know couple of question like how many number of employees are working uh, because the cost will depend on your company size uh, then your product you know the level of risk associated with the scope of services offered by your company then how many number of processes how complex is your management system and the number of working shifts some companies have two shifts uh, general shift and night shift some company have three shifts also so the cost of certification will depend on all these different factors then how much time does it take small organization 6 to 8 months medium size 8 to 12 months and large organization 12 to 15 months okay and validity once you get the certificate it is valid for 3 years okay so final stage for the certification audit is done and all observation and finding are effectively seem to be closed and reviewed by the auditors as i mentioned after second stage audit <clears throat> see to that all non conformity is closed okay and then once you get the certificate which is valid for 3 years then every year you have to have surveillance audit okay so if any organization fail to conduct the respective surveillance cycle audit or any major lapse observed in the system at the time of surveillance audit which is been not closed then the certificates comes under suspension so although you get the three years validity of the certificate every year you have to go for the surveillance audit if not your certificate will be suspended okay and uh, these are the references from where i have taken the content uh, thank you very much for your attention so we have covered uh, this iso 134 uh, sorry iso organization of standardization so i hope it is pretty clear now how this iso is important so now we, we move uh, before i move to the next topic i will have the quiz session Thanks once again.